Do you guys know what today is? Today's a good day to build a damn race engine. We're building a race engine, folks. I got some parts here. Got it right from my balancing guy, the great guy. Uh, it's time to take my food off. So uh, we'll stop this real quick. <laughs> Okay, the food can wait. These jeans are uh, complimentary when you buy used parts, apparently. You get their old used jeans, they probably never washed them. That's fine. You don't need an ass in your jeans anyway. All right, so we got the crank. Um, he said that it was pretty rough. You can see he added a ton of weight to it. Um, that doesn't even look that great, but I trust the guy. He's like 800 years old, uh, so it's probably pretty decent. Um, yeah, so this thing is, uh, all balanced out, ready to go. Um, good to throw in. Pretty excited about that. Uh, all the journals look good and stuff. He didn't touch any of that, but that's how I got it. And, uh, she should be ready to ride. I got my, uh, rod bearings here. I also cleaned my bench for once. It's actually clean to do this job. I'm guessing he boxed up my pistons real nice so they don't get all f***ed up. Just from like the five minute drive home. Some more bearings, that's good. I think that one's an extra. We got our rings. New total seal rings for it. And I think these may be the rods. Hell yeah, we got our manly rods for this guy. And he said that the rods were actually really good. These are MMR manly rods. And he said that they're closer than most rods are. So MMR worked with them and they're pretty decent. But he did say that they're pretty heavy. Now this is a zero, zero balance motor, but he did his thing and messed with the crank because he said it needed more to balance the rods. Um, but yeah, no, it looks pretty good. I mean, he did his job. I don't think that's going to fall off. But, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, this is the start of the 1,000 horsepower project. We'll see if we get there. I sold the old transmission out of the car the other day. So that's uh, good to have some money in the pocket because this shit ain't cheap. And especially if I'm going to shoot for the 1,000 mark, which... It's going to be with all junk, basically. So, get my junkyard junk Gen 1 engine together. You're going to do some honing on it next. Uh, that'll be the next step. Um, and then I can start file fitting the, the piston rings, which even if I don't put the blower on it right now, I'm still going to file fit these for a supercharger, which you open the gap more for uh, boosted applications. So the, uh, whatever, there's a bunch of science to it. I'm not going to explain it. Um, yeah. And then we can test fit our bearings and stuff, but I'm still waiting on some parts. So I don't have everything, but I can get going and I'll have the workout cut out for me for the next couple of days. So we'll be ready to go. All right. I'm going to go take my food off the grill now. Okay. Well, first things first. This cylinder has a little scratch in here. You can't really see it, so I'll get you a little light that I'm failing at pretty bad right here. Okay, so there's some scuffs in there, probably from blowing it up. Uh, so I'm gonna run a hone through all these, even though the cross hatching is actually pretty good. Um, I'll just run it through here real quick and uh, get any uh, lamination or anything that's on the cylinders off of it and um, that way I can start sizing the rings but uh, I'm not gonna take this first video because I'm probably gonna mess it up because it's been a little bit and uh, I'm gonna start on this guy since it's got the most to take out so we'll see how this goes Well, 
it took me about 10 minutes to do the block. And after learning what I was doing, the cross hatching actually came out pretty good. That you can't really see, but you know, I'm gonna tell you it looks pretty good. You could probably tell me it looks pretty bad. Uh, probably could have honed it more since that cylinder is a little bit lighter, but I did give this one all of it, all of the hone, because it did have that little score in there, but you can barely see, you can't feel it anymore. So I'm gonna run it and hopefully it's good. And uh, you know, it's the number eight cylinder. So there's definitely no issues with this cylinder whatsoever. It definitely won't break because you know, Ford's never have an issue with number eight cylinder. But uh, now I gotta clean this thing up, which isn't that big of a deal. I'll just use some engine degreaser in the hose, spray her down, uh, wipe it out with a nice clean rag, and uh, then spray some more WD-40 on her. Make sure she's real nice and clean. Okay, so I'm here doing the uh, ring gaps on this engine, and um, I just used my feeler gauge set to check the little gap in there. You can kind of see it on the ring. And it's like slightly less than, it's probably like 14 thou. And if you go on the Total Seal website, it gives you a list of uh, gaps and stuff. So uh, I'm shooting for like a 25 thou gap because I'm going to build this engine for boost. Uh, even though it probably won't have a blower on it right away. So we're going to set everything up. Rather be safe than sorry. And... Um, so it might smoke a little bit with it being naturally aspirated, but once I put boost on it, it'll be happy being like that. And I won't have to tear the engine back down just to set the ring gaps. Um, so it's super important to do that when you're building an engine. And I also did check the uh, piston to wall clearance. Um, so when I did that, I just sat the piston in like this, moved it over and checked the wall clearance so you can push this down a little bit and put a feeler gauge in there. Um, not the best way to do it, but most people have feeler gauges and you can set that. Now with the, uh, the ring, uh, you want to make sure that it's in there perfectly straight. Easiest way to do that is sit the ring in there, push it down with the piston to about halfway through the cylinder. And, uh, then you can check the gap like that. And then we'll use a, uh, a ring filer to file that down. You can use a regular hand file, but my buddy had a ring filer. So I'm going to do it the right way. And uh, the guy that did all the balancing and stuff, I was talking to him about doing it with a ring filer. He said, make sure to always file in. That way you don't chip off the edge of the ring. Um, so you always want to file it towards the inside. All right, so today we got a pretty sick package in. Another one for the car. Uh, the good guy is over at power by the hour hooked me up with a pretty good deal over here and this is what's gonna really excite me about this new motor that I'm gonna be building for this car because um, it's not a build I'm normally used to which is pretty mild but works pretty well which I guess this one is pretty mild too. It's just a little bit different. And this is why. We got some big bad boy GT350 heads. Factory CNC ported. Bigger valves all from the factory. Um, I do get to change the cams. But these things look like they're in great shape. And I'm so excited to be putting these on the car because these should really wake that coyote up and uh they'll be able to put in some work once i get this on mint all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video this is just part one of the engine build so you'll be seeing a lot more of this and you guys get to see the heads and everything so at least now you know that the build's going to be pretty badass so make sure you stay tuned follow uh, what I'm doing make sure you su subscribe share and like and uh, tell your friends about it that way I can make better videos for you and make better entertainment so uh, there'll just be more to come and uh, hope you guys are enjoying it